Good morning, everybody. Good morning to, and welcome to Life Plus Church online or Church Without Walls. It's really good to be able to meet with you again, even under such a difficult circumstances. And I want to say hello to everybody uh, of Life Plus Church watching uh, via YouTube or Facebook uh, page. And just want to welcome you here today as we worship the Lord on Sunday, the 10th of January, 2021. Can you believe that we're here now? One of the things I want to do before we um, commence uh, our time of worship is to read some of the passages to you in the midst of, of all that's going on just now. As I know, as we heard the First Minister speak on, on the other day there, I think it was Monday, and we just felt like our hearts sank. I've certainly felt like my heart sank as we went into this uh, deeper time of uh, guidelines and uh, health and safety measures. But one thing we can all uh, take uh, courage in is the scriptures, that our God is a faithful God. And in the midst of all this uncertainty, we have a sure and steady anchor for our souls, and that is Christ the Lord. And so I want to read a couple of scriptures to you from the Passion Bible. The first one's from 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 and 10. And this is what the scripture says. It says, Things never discovered or heard of before, things beyond our ability to imagine. These are the many things God has in store for all his lovers. The lover, he's the lover of our soul and we are the lover of him. He is our good father. But it goes on and it says, but God now unveils these profound realities to us by the Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit, who constantly explores all things. Then in Romans 8, 30 and 31, it says this, Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his Son. Isn't that wonderful? And as it goes on and he speaks of God's triumph, it says this, so what does this all mean? If God has determined to stand with us, tell me, who then could ever stand against us? Who then can ever stand against us? No one. And so let's just open with prayer now and, um, and then Hamish is coming and we're going to spend some time in worship, okay? Father God, we just thank you today, Lord God, that you are who you say you are. We just thank you, Lord, that you are the good, good Father. Lord, that you are enthroned upon our praises as we worship you today. So we just want to bless your holy name right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we're going to open now with a, a, a well-known song called My Deliverer.
bless you, man. Bless you, Lord. We're going to sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Beautiful hand. Wonderful Lord. Boy, just come in this baby. Mighty Lord.
our church services where we have the time where we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Uh, just to um, bring a little clarity to uh, our worship in the Lord's in tithe, with tithes and offerings, many, many of you have been extremely faithful with, with your giving and um, the Lord will bless you for that as you keep this work of, um, in, in our area uh, uh, supplied with uh, finance as many, many of us do. You know, it's, it says, um, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And, tr and, tr and the Lord goes on to say, and try me now in this and see if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you uh, such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it all. And that's from Malachi 3.10, a well-known scripture verse. There's another scripture verse in um, in First uh, Corinthians three to thirteen, and it, it says, "And now three things remain: faith, hope, and charity. But the greatest of these is charity or love. It's the practical application of love, and this keeps us um, as we bring the whole tithe into the storehouse and we bring our offerings into the storehouse." We are able to keep this centre that God has given to us to be a light and a beacon in our area, to offer a hope for those that have no hope. As the word goes out, as we stay faithful in delivering the word of God to uh, the people in the community that don't know him, that do not have a hope for the future, and also for ourselves to keep us in the word, abiding in the vine, as the scripture says. So, one of the things we've noticed with the um, with those that are involved in business, and if you've been listening to not only Nicholas Sturgeon speak, but also uh, the the Westminster uh, cabinet, Matt Hancock has said that um, that the furlough scheme, which is the scheme that helps businesses to stay afloat is going to be in operation until the 30th of April. So this means that it is possible that uh, we, we will not be back in church for a good long time. So we need to make sure that we stay faithful and give to the work of the Lord so that the word can go out and um, be heard in our community as well as be a support to those that already know Christ. So what I'm going to do is we, we know that we have our, our um, envelopes here at church, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send out to those that are, or, um, are not, I, I have not been giving by standing order or online so that you can set up your online so that it comes in every every month to support the work of the Lord in this area. This is our mission. This is our Jerusalem. This is where you and I are called to. And so we need to be faithful not only in um, being a part of these online services, but we need to also be faithful in our financial giving into this work that the Lord has called us into. You know, we've nearly been here, well, we've been here over 27 years. I think we're now in really our 28th year as of the 7th of February. So we're 28 years here and uh, we need to make sure that our witness stays, um, stays in this community and this is how God uses our finances to make sure that we remain a witness in this community. But again, I say thank you, thank you, thank you on behalf of the Lord for your commitment and for um, making sure that, that that money is coming in uh, each week or each month, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to make available the, the uh, information uh, to set up a standing order uh, for yourself uh, and uh, I'll get that out to everybody that hasn't already set up standing orders. All right, so God bless you as you give. 
into the work of the Lord in Blegari because our word, the word is going out and it's going far and wide. But essentially we need to meet the people in our own area and that is our focus. So we want to bless the people of Blegari and Rattray, Aylith, New Aylith, um, New Tile and Meagle, Burlton, Kibarangas, all these places that are all around about the little villages up the glens. Look, we've got a 20,000 um, populated, 20,000 people in our population in this area. So we've got a lot of people to meet. So you are being a missionary in this area as you give into the work of the Lord. As, as well, I want to say also, please, as it goes up on Facebook, on our public page, please like it and then comment and share. Because as you do this, you are making the word go further. More people are having the opportunity to hear the gospel message. Hamish will be um, sharing a gospel message at the end of every meeting again so that that message goes out so souls can be saved. Please do your part in liking, commenting and sharing. It, 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 each thing you do actually causes um, a multiplication and goes further. And you've got to admit this is the easiest type of evangelism that we'll ever be involved in. So I'm asking you to, to think about this time that we're in as far as your giving is concerned and as far as the Facebook or the YouTube. And same again on YouTube. Please like and comment and share. And even if the opportunity to subscribe comes up, please subscribe because, again, you're causing a multiplication um, process to go out into the world for others to hear the gospel that would never have heard it before. So you have a very big part to play in the area of IT and uh, as a missionary, you are a missionary whether you, you realise it or not, you are a missionary in your area. So please um, carry out the word of the Lord and you know take that word and spread it through the IT portals, through the, the wonderful technology that we've got available today to Send that word out and cause a person to come closer to Christ. That's what you're doing. As you share that, no matter if you have a bad reaction from somebody, the way that God has made us is that whether we like something or not, when we hear a word, it goes in. And we actually start to progress. So when the word of God goes out, there will be a progression to take place. You might have moved from somebody from minus 10 to minus 9, or you might have taken somebody from minus 1 to 0 and they're ready to make a commitment for the Lord. You don't know, but this is your opportunity to help make that happen so that when you stand before the Lord, he will be able to say to you, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's the words that I want to hear more than anything else when I stand before the Lord. Okay, so God bless you, brothers and sisters, as you carry out um, all this missionary work that we have made, had made available to us. Okay, bless you. Amen. Well, good morning, folks. I'd just like to uh, welcome you to this message today, and I trust that you will uh, receive it in your heart, and it will be a blessing to you. I want to continue with... Um, the first class titles that I've been looking at now for some months. We looked at the glory of God, which is really the main theme um, of these messages. The main focus, really, of everything that we're doing here just now. So we've looked at the, the glory of God. We're going to look at that a bit further today. Um, we're going to talk about God's authority, or about our authority, pertaining to the glory of the Lord. We've already looked at courage and we've looked at love, so we're now on the fourth uh, title of the first class theme. To do that, we're going to look at Ezekiel's vision of the river of God in Ezekiel 47, and also a subject that the Lord Jesus speaks about, and one that's very important, I believe, for us at this time, when we consider the glory of the Lord. It's a subject that Jesus told us to avoid, basically at all costs, and um, it's one that's very important as we move ahead and progress in the things of God at this time. And so the title of my message today then is Moving Deeper 
into God's river glory. Moving deeper into God's river glory. If you remember in my conclusion last week, I quoted Sid Roth of It's Supernatural fame. And um, he wrote the foreword to Tracy Cook's book on the spiritual gifts. And uh, so I want to begin this message um, with that quote from Sid Roth. He says this, he says, Shortly, over a billion, mostly young people, will be radically saved. The old wineskins of most churches will not satisfy them. They will be radically saved and baptised in the Holy Spirit and fire. The next and greatest move of God's Spirit in history is upon us. It is called the Greater Glory. It will be a hundred times more powerful than Catherine Kuhlman or any great ministry the world has ever seen. The Greater Glory is like the water that comes from Ezekiel's temple. First it was at ankle level and gradually the water increased until it was a river. And everywhere it went, fish or people, they were healed. Right now the glory is at our, our ankles. Get hungry for more. It is about to become a mighty river. My heart's desire is for you to be front and centre in this greater glory outpouring. God is saying, all hands on deck, now is the time to prepare. Now is the time to prepare. We're going to look at Ezekiel's vision of the river of God today. But just to say that um, we've been going through the first class titles um, for some time now, for some months now. We've looked at the glory of God as being the first and most important thing. And also C for courage, L for love. Today is A for authority. But of course we also have sincerity and strength which spells out first class. Today though we need to lay some foundations I believe. Keeping in mind that all of these titles themselves are part and parcel of the glory of God. And so we must understand that all of these things are within the parameters of that reality. And so we're going to continue today uh, with this line of thinking as the glory of God is really the pinnacle of what God wants to do, I believe, prophetically in these times. Important times in the history of the earth, I believe, also. And so in order to add our authority into the mix, I want us to understand that the glory of God that affects us has to be something that is a regular part of our lives, a regular part of all that we do, because it needs to act as a catalyst for where God wants to take his church, for where God wants to take you as a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's so important. And so Ezekiel 47, if you have your Bibles there, please turn with me to Ezekiel 47 and we're going to read from verse 1. The prophet is talking about a man, he, he refers to him as a man but he's, he's really an angel. And it says, then he brought me back to the door of the temple and there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east. From the front of the temple, for the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside of the outer gate, of the outer gateway that faces east. And there was water running out on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits. And he brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankles. Again he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my knees. Again he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water and the water came up to my waist. Verse 5 says, And he measured 1,000 again and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. And he said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. This is the river of life. This is the Holy Spirit being described here as a river flowing from the temple of God to the earth and interacting with humanity. We continue to read in verse 7. 
When I returned there along the bank of the river, were very many trees on one side and the other. Then he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes, will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters go there, for they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi to En Eglium. There will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds as the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. These prophets in writing speak of an outpouring of the Spirit of God that as Christians, truly we have been longing for and praying for for many, many years. We look around us, we see the world that has taken shape around us and we say, Oh Lord, it's getting, it's getting desperate now. We need a move of God in our land, in our nation, in our town, in our city, in our lives. In these verses we read that the Holy Spirit is viewed here as being a river who brings his power into the life of humanity on the earth. And desperately we need this power. He brings this power in three ways or to do three particular things. To bring salvation and healing and life. Verse 8 says this. When the river reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Verse 9 says, It shall be that every living thing, including human beings, that moves wherever the river goes, they will live. And again in verse 9, There will be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters go there, and they will be healed, and everything will live wherever the river goes. A great deal of fish, a great many fish. Remember what Jesus said, to his disciples in Matthew 4 and verse 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So we know that the fish here is not really fish, but in the imagery of Ezekiel, he is talking about humanity itself and about the power of God being unleashed to mankind to bring salvation and to bring healing and to bring life because this is what Jesus Christ came to do for us all. So we're looking for the Lord to bring to this town, to this land, to this nation of Scotland, these three things, salvation, healing, and life. Truly these were the things that Jesus brought to this world through his death on the cross, through his resurrection. And as the Lord spoke to his disciples, the Bible says that for a period of 40 days he met with them. Then he returns to heaven and he sends the Holy Spirit to the earth, to the 120 waiting in the upper room in Jerusalem for the promise to be fulfilled. Acts 1.8, a very famous verse says this, the promise of Jesus, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. This is Ezekiel's river. This is the Holy Spirit of God given to the early church in order to establish the faith, the Christian faith upon the earth. For the next 2,000 years, the church would go through many changes, some good and some not so good. Right up until we arrive today in 2021. 2021. That may beg the question, well, Lord, what do we do now? What's going to happen now? Well, today I want to share a number of important aspects of the glory of God that we can actually practice for ourselves. Yes, we can practice the glory of God ourselves because we need the glory of God to affect us. If we're going to be men and women and young people and even children, who know their authority in Christ, then the glory of God, we need to understand more about the glory of God and the God-given authority that He has given us. Currently, we are subjected again to another lockdown. 
And uh, so we need to deal with the frustration of that, but even perhaps the anger of that, and look to the Lord to continue to build us up despite what's going on. You know, these shakings, as the Bible tells us, God says, I will shake the nations. We're certainly being shaken just now. And there's a reason for that because the Lord is looking for those who, who will put up with the shakings, those who will stand strong in the shakings of God Almighty. Because they will make us stronger. The Bible tells us that. Difficult times make us stronger. They will either do that or, or will fall away. And sadly, some have already fallen away. But the Bible encourages us. We are not of those that draw back, but we are those who move forward in faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, even in difficult times. And so today I want us to, to look again to the glory of the Lord and begin to experience or understand what it is to experience of what I was saying to us last week. That God is a God of adventure. That God has called us to, to, to this adventure which is a Christian faith. That we are pioneers. That we are explorers of the kingdom of heaven. And the Lord is looking for people who will push into him. That will press in at this time and explore the, the vastness of God's kingdom. This is our opportunity. This is our opportunity to do something wonderful for God. Despite the lockdowns, we can use the devil's plans, if you like, in order to move ahead in the purposes of God at this time. This is our opportunity, folks, to develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to begin to understand what it is to, to, to walk in the glory of the living God. Because God is inviting us into his presence as never before. I really believe that. Just as Ezekiel experienced the river of God, he went deeper and deeper and deeper into the river itself until it became a river that he could not cross. He could not cross. And so my first point today is Ezekiel's experience as he wades through this river being led by this angel it just got deeper and deeper, didn't it? It got so deep, in fact, he couldn't take another step because to take another step, he would have ended up being carried by the river itself. In fact, it's at this time that the angel asks him this very important question. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Have you seen this? It's a simple question. But it has a very deep meaning. If you'll pardon the pun. The angel asks the prophet, Have you seen these things? This is an important question. And I looked at the word seen because I began to think, Well, what do, what do they actually mean by this? Well, the word used here for seen is a Hebrew word, ro'o. And it carries a number of interesting meanings. Let me just list a few of them. It means to see either, you know, just in the physical sense, but also figuratively or spiritually. It means to approve or consider. It means to discern or experience and perceive something. But it's also an interesting word because it is actually a word that's responsible for the use of the word prophet. Ezekiel was a seer. He was a prophet of God. And it speaks about spiritual insight. It speaks about us having spiritual discernment. And is used of sharp sight. Or being able to see very clearly in the things of the Spirit. Which is what the prophet of God would have to do. So the angel is speaking to, to Ezekiel and is saying, Are you discerning this? Are you understanding this vision? Are you considering and approving of it? Are you experiencing it? Are you perceiving what I'm revealing to you? That's what he's saying. And you know, it's through including these other definitions of this word, we can now determine that the angel is asking a question that's going far deeper into the mind of the prophet than we may have understood. 
He wasn't speaking about necessarily, you know, just physical sight. It goes much deeper. He's talking about spiritual insight. This is a spiritual insight question. A spiritual insight question. Folks, I believe the Lord is keen to bring his church into a much greater revelation of who he is, of his presence than we've ever encountered before. And just as the angel asks the prophet Ezekiel about his ability to see into the realms of the spirit, so too the Lord is asking us today, Son of man, have you seen this? Have you seen this? You see, this is where the glory of God and our authority in Christ, this is where it comes from and this is where the Lord will take us. Into the Father's realms. Into the realms of the kingdom of God. Into the realms of the Spirit. And the reason for this is very simple. It is only in the realms of the Spirit of God that we will find the answers to many and all of the difficulties that we are facing in our lives today in 2021. Jesus is calling forth his prophetic people. He is calling forth his prophetic church. In Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10, this is what it says, For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I'll say that again. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And we are followers of Jesus Christ. So if it is the Lord Jesus' testimony, the spirit of prophecy then is also ours. We are being called deeper and deeper to be a prophetic people. A prophetic people. That's where the Lord has taken us. He wants us to embrace this prophetic realm in a way that we will experience it, much like Ezekiel did. You know, this prophet was a humble man because he was willing to learn more and more about what it is to, to be a prophet of God. The church is a prophetic people. We know that. And the Lord is saying, I need you to, to, to now walk deeper with me. I need you to move closer to me. I have things to show you. I have things to, to, that, to determine your future if you only look and seek me and seek after them for me. We have to be a people that are willing to learn and learn and learn and continue to learn the things of God, just like this prophet did. In this passage, he is asked to consider what he has been witnessing about the river that flows from the temple of God. He's been asked to look closely. He's been asked to look at the experience that he's having just now, to deeply consider these things, to understand these things, to know what God is revealing to him through this and through these visions. The final leg of his journey th through this river is particularly important. It's because he reaches a point where he can no longer feel the ground under his feet. It's like the bedrock has gone. And to step one step further would to be to lose control of his ability to stand by himself. I really believe that this is possibly the most important aspect of what the Lord wanted to teach his prophet on this occasion. I could put it like this in my own words. Like this angel says to him, Do you see where I have brought you, my son? Do you understand where you are now standing? Do you comprehend this place? Do you understand that this place where you are now standing is the place of release? It is a place of release. It is a place of relinquishing your control and the place of total trust in me. Total trust in me. I need you to see it, says the Lord. I need you to comprehend it. I need you to experience it, to discern it, to consider it, and to approve of it for your life from this day forward. Because this is a place where my glory dwells. I have taken you to the place where my spirit is so powerful that you cannot control any of it. You cannot control any of it. 
It is time for the river to carry you to wherever I want the river to go, to whoever I want the river to touch and heal and save and deliver and restore and bless and give life to. Do you understand this? Because this is where I am taking those who want to move forward in Christ. Those who will remain steadfast and loyal and faithful to me, says the Lord. Remember the famous words by the Lord Jesus himself in John chapter 5 and verse 19. Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do, for whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. In a word, dependency. When Jesus said these words, he was telling everyone he was totally dependent upon the Father. In other words, he was saying that everything he did was not his own ideas. He never designed them. He never created them. He never thought them up in his own mind. He never constructed them. He left all of that to his Father to do. And this is why Jesus was so successful in all that he did. This was also the reason why Jesus was so powerful. As he operated in the Spirit of God and in great faith, he never missed a beat. He never threw away an opportunity because every opportunity he encountered was the Father's opportunity. It was of the Father's making. Jesus simply relaxed. And he had the knowledge that he needed to draw near to the Father, to hear the Father's voice and to obey whatever the Father said. You know, in 1978, my future wife and I flew off to Australia. I was 20 years old. Bonnie's parents were in the printing business and they'd offered me a job in their print factory. You know, I discovered something on my first day at work. I noticed that my father-in-law to be, at that time, you know, he never, he never came to me and said, well, hey, Hamish, where's, where's the printing machine that you brought from Scotland so you could now do some work for me? We never had that conversation. Why didn't we have that conversation? I'll tell you why. Because I was working for him. Which meant that he was obligated to give me all the materials I needed in order to produce something for him. He never expected me to bring a print machine from Scotland all the way to Australia. The onus was on him to provide for me. And as I worked there, he would teach me everything I needed to know about what it was to be a printer. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? This is how Jesus operated. The Father had provided everything. Jesus knew the Father had everything planned out for him. Just like the Bible tells us, God has prepared works for us to do. It's all there. It's all waiting. It's all ready for us. The Father simply says, just let it relax in that. Just let it understand that I've got everything waiting for you to step into. I said some weeks ago, you know, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, we remember the song. One day at a time. 24 hours allowing the Holy Spirit to guide in our lives. Jesus was a conduit for the free flowing of the river of life to come from the Father through him into this earth. To hurting humanity. To change the world. The Lord says, this is where I want my church to be at this time and in this day. Have you really contemplated some of these things? Have you ever wondered why Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 16, verses 25 and 26, after his teaching on, <coughs> you cannot serve God and money, <coughs> or God and mammon. This is what the Lord says, this is important. Therefore I say to you, 
Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you by worrying can add one cubic to his stature? You know, we've, we know that passage so well, but very often we come back to the Lord and say, Well, Lord, it is easier said than done. And yet we miss the point altogether. The point is to trust the Father in everything, everything pertaining to our earthly life. And there's a reason for that. It's so we can concentrate on the more important things that we want to do for Him. Folks, let me say it like this. You will never successfully serve the Lord Jesus if your life is all about putting out fires. I know so many believers over the years that their whole life has been putting out fires, going from this problem to that problem to the next problem to the next problem, getting involved in this thing, getting involved in that thing, getting involved in other people's disputes and things. And, and, and really all they do is they put out fires, put out fires, put out fires. There's no time to serve the Lord Jesus. That's not how God wants us to live. That's certainly not how I want to live my life. The Lord says, these are the things that the world goes after. They worry about their life, they worry about this, they worry about that thing, and all of these things, but it's not for you. It's not for you, says the Lord. Stop thinking like the world thinks. Stop doing what the world does. I have called you to a higher calling so that you don't think as they do and you don't do as they do either. I have a purpose for you. I have a work for you. And I need your attention. Are you hearing this, saints? Are you hearing this, sons and daughters of God? Jesus says, I need your attention at this time. Worry and anxiety. They spell death and destruction for the Christian's life. Just as surely as a, a massive avalanche would wipe out all before it. I don't want to be one that's going to be swept away by the cares and anxieties of this life. Because worry, truly folks, worry is the enemy of the glory of God. Worry is the enemy of the glory of God. It will dismantle us. It will dismantle just about everything that we are trying to accomplish for Christ. And this is why I believe the angel of the Lord took Ezekiel to the very brink of the river that was now too deep to cross. He was challenging him. He was to see how he is going to react or respond to this great river. He wanted him to consider it. He wanted him to see it. He wanted him to discern it. He wanted him to perceive and experience and approve of his future life because this is where he was going. God says the same to us today. I want to take you deeper. I want to take you further than you've ever been before. This is his challenge to us because I honestly believe that everything is about to change. We are to step into this amazing river a river too deep to cross, a river too powerful for all of us, a river that is capable of carrying us into places we never thought was possible, places that have never even entered into our hearts or into our minds. But he wants us to go there without a worry on our mind whatsoever. In fact, let me put it like this, we simply cannot go into this river unless we go there without a worry on our mind. Jesus wants us to operate as he did, totally relaxed, totally at peace, full of the joy of the Lord, knowing that his Father has got everything prepared for him. That's how he wants us to live. There are some of us here today and you're caught up into this thing. You're caught up into that thing. You're, 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 you're struggling with this thing. You're struggling with that thing. And, and the Lord knows that there are problems on the earth. And we all know that. We're going through some difficult times just now. But I honestly believe the Lord is saying, 
Choose your battles well. Choose the things that you need to be involved in and the things that you really don't need to be involved in because the Lord needs your attention at this time in order for you to be relaxed and to move in the glory of the Lord. I believe this is God's word for us today. God wants us to be released into true freedom in Christ. And so over the next few weeks, I want to look at this further. I want to take us deeper. I want to challenge you even more. But also to, to train us folks as to how we can move into the glory of the Lord. Into river glory. Ruth Heflin and her book, River Glory says this, God is doing things differently than we could have anticipated. He is sending revival in his own way and is calling for a people who will accept revival on his terms. On his terms. So we'll end in here is my question to everyone watching and listening to this message today. Son, daughter, of man. Have you seen this? Have you perceived this? Do you see what this message is saying to you today? Will you take time to consider it? Do you discern and perceive it? Will you approve it? Will you be willing to experience a taste of your future ministry and life within this mighty river? of God. Again he measured 1,000 and it was a river that I could not cross for the water was too deep. Water in which one must swim. A river that could not be crossed. All we are as Christians folks is seen in this. It is found in moving where the river of God moves. Like Israel in the desert led by the cloud of God by day and the pillar of fire by night. We are about to step into that realm of his leading and his directing. He is looking for his church to stand up, take up our shield, take up our sword and follow him wherever he leads us. This is God's word I believe to all of us here today. If you're not a Christian and you've listened to this message and it, and, it, and it seems to have gone over your head, then don't worry. The most important thing for you today is to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's to get connected to this great and amazing God. This God that rules the heavens and the earth. This God of whom one day you'll stand before and you'll give an account for your life. Whether you have done that which is righteous in his eyes or you have done that which is wrong in his eyes. The Lord Jesus Christ came to die for the sins of the world. Now I've spoken to people many different times and I've heard them say things like, well, I've, I've never done anything wrong. And uh, we just have to ask a few questions to discover that we have all done many things wrong. And this, of course, is the problem, isn't it? Heaven is a perfect place. There will be no wrong doing in heaven. Jesus says to the disciples, you have to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. And the disciples say, well, who can be saved? And Jesus says to them, what is not possible for, for men is possible for God. There is a way to be perfected in this life. And it's through what Jesus came to do for us 2,000 years ago. The Bible says that Jesus was sinless. He was born of the Virgin Mary. I think most of us know that. God himself was his father. Was his father. He was sinless from birth. And he lived. He grew up and he lived. And he performed tremendous feats and miracles. He revealed the kingdom of heaven to this earth. So those who would trust in him would also enter the kingdom of heaven when we're finished and our days here are over. The reason he died on the cross was simply this. 
At the time that Jesus came to the earth, God's judgment was about to fall on mankind because sin and evil had reached a peak, had reached a pinnacle to a place where God says, I must now judge sin yet again. But this time he chose to come to the earth in the person of Jesus Christ and receive that punishment himself, which he did at Calvary on the cross. He died, but he descended to hell. He rose again on the third day. He defeated death, and he now offers you eternal life because of his victory over death itself. He returned to the Father and he sent his Holy Spirit that I've spoken about today. And it's the Holy Spirit that he gives you that is your seal for eternal life. I received the Holy Spirit some 30 odd years ago now, and I've never regretted that moment. And millions and millions of Christians throughout the earth, throughout the earth have never regretted that moment they gave their life to Christ. Because the peace of God comes, the joy of the Lord comes, the hope of glory comes to live within you. And there's nothing like it. You can't explain or put it into words. And so today, I would like to offer you the opportunity to become a Christian, to give your life to Jesus and say, you know something, Lord, this world is going all the pot, but I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm going to put my hope in you. And today, I'm going to get to know this God that created me in his own image. If that is you today, you simply have to do this. To take your first step towards God Almighty himself. And that is you need to repent of your sins. Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is near. Well, the kingdom of heaven is right here today. The Lord says, turn from your sins and choose to follow me. Give up on your old way of life. Give up on your old things and give your life over to me and I will change you from the inside. I will give you eternal life and I'll begin to progress you through and prepare you for heaven itself. So if that's you, if you want to do that today, then pray this simple prayer, a prayer of confession. Father, forgive me for I have sinned against you. I repent of my sins and I ask you, to cleanse me from all sin and give me eternal life, putting my trust in Jesus Christ. So if you want to do that today, then please pray this prayer with me. Let's pray together. Just repeat these words after me, please. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I confess, Lord, that I have sinned. I have sinned against other people, even against myself but I've also sinned against you. Please forgive me now. Wash away all my sin. Give me a new start in life. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you died for me, that you paid the penalty for my sin so that I don't have to. I put my trust in you now. I give my whole life over to you now and I pray that you would come and give me your Holy Spirit and begin to prepare me for heaven itself. I thank you for dying for me. I believe you rose from the dead and you're now seated at the Father's right hand. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. And I put my trust and faith in you for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then please you can get in touch with us at Life Plus Church in Blair Gowrie. Um, you know, the link is on uh, the bottom of this uh, message. Um, or if you have family or friends who are Christians and you're maybe watching this message today with them, then I'm sure they will be delighted if you have given your life to Christ. So God bless you. Thanks again for watching. And uh, by the grace of God, we'll be back again next week to continue this message to see where the Lord wants to take us in regards to this amazing river of life that he has poured out upon us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.